Hey folks, it's Mark and Eli with Fire Mountain Outdoors. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're changing stuff up a little bit because we're going to be talking about two uh, budget-friendly entry-level muzzle loaders today. Uh, last year, Eli and I, during elk season, we got snowed in and we had to move and we got skunked. So we spent a bunch of the season trying to get out of the snow and we got skunked because we didn't get any, uh, any elk. So uh, Tracy and Tanner and I and Eli, we all decided that we were going to go muzzleloader season this year, which is an early season. And then we could ride our Rokons and stay out of the snow and maybe have a lot more fun. So that meant that we had to go buy some muzzleloaders. So Eli was proactive on his deal and he went and got himself a Traditions Buckstalker. This is a Northwest Magnum. Now the Northwest Edition one, they use a regular musket cap and there used to be a requirement that there that the breech needed to be exposed to the elements the cap needed to be able to get rain in it i wanted to hold out because that uh that rule was under review and sure enough the state of washington changed that and they dropped that rule saying that uh you could not use 209 primers and they also dropped the rule that it had to be exposed so that led me to buy the Thompson Center Impact. And uh, this one is also an inline, uh, very budget friendly. And it uh, takes the 209 primers and it has a closed breech that's not exposed to the elements. So today um, we're gonna be shooting these, just getting them sighted in. Um, Eli over here, you can see he's all busybody because he is going with uh, traditional loose powder and he's pre-measuring his loads over here. Um, I decided to go with the 777 pellets and I have uh, 209 primers and I'm going to be using the Hornady uh, Monoflex bullets. Eli is going to be using the Hornady SST, uh, which is also a Sabo. Some people say Sabot. Uh, so they're they're very similar but these are lead these are all copper it looks like Eli has most of his charges measured out he's also going to be using the uh, 301 four wing musket caps CCI 301s so musket caps he has a musket cap nipple so both of these have uh, fiber optic sights uh, which are nice, but because they are entry level, they're both the sights are plastic. That kind of concerns me a little bit, but there's plastic everywhere anymore. Uh, I actually like the sights on the TC better. Um, on the Buckstalker, the design of the rear sight, uh, the U actually kind of obscures where the orange dot, where that sight picture should be. So I'm not the biggest fan of that. Um, the Thompson Center also has a, uh, a, a spacer that you can take out for length of pull. So if you have a youth, um, that they can grow into the, the muzzle loader. All that said, let's get to loading and get to talking. No more talk, more shoot. It's really windy. I'm making excuses for uh, the group already. Um, I'm shooting a 250 grain bullet. Um, according to the specs, it's going to be going really fast. And it's going to go in that general vicinity. Now, to break open the action on the TC is kind of a slightly complicated affair um, it's not really complicated but sometimes it, this has been kind of bulky I'm not a big fan uh, there's not a huge engagement surface for you to grab um, and sometimes this it, it gets jammed a little bit especially if the uh, breech plug isn't absolutely seated or bottom so we break open just like this and we take out a 209 primer. We insert it into the hole. And then we close it. 
and then we're ready for it to either shoot or blow up. <laughs> you guys see that video of that 700, uh, Remington 700 blowing up? Made me nervous. Okay. Those targets suck. I don't, I don't like them. Maybe it's just your eyes. My eyes suck, and so do those targets. That's, uh, and, and I'm an optics guy. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of stuff that we got that still has irons on it. I know, that's because I can't see. I can't focus on all five things at once. I know you're only supposed to focus on the front sight, but... Okay, so in this particular instance, the target is really small, and these fiber optic uh, sights are great, uh, but almost too great, because with my eyes, it's like looking into oncoming headlights. A green one and two orange ones. Like a hillbilly with a broken fog light. <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. First shot fired, the Thompson. Mother <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> holy <laughs> The thing jumped up and grabbed my titty and slammed it underneath the... Holy crap! Ow! <laughs> Cock <-sa>. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> holy... <laughs> I'm gonna have a blood blister on my titty! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> I don't like this gun! <laughs> oh! Uh, Eli, did he hit the target? Yeah. So he's dead on windage wise, but he's three and a half inches high. So that would so, and that probably has something to do with this. See how this this is. That's not seated. So if I wanted to go lower, uh, I would need to. Well, let's see. Hi. Yeah, yeah. The back sight would need to go down, and it's it's not sitting flush. I mean, I can't go down anymore. Okay. One thing I want to point out uh, on these 209 primers, because it was unusual to me, is they don't seat all the way in the in the uh, in the spot. It's offset like that. And that's just the way they are. So there's not something wrong. It's not machined wrong. It's so that you can grab them and uh, and pull them back out. So uh, if you've got a 209 primered muzzle loader, uh, that's normal. All right, uh, I'm going to take another shot with the booby biter. I think it has a name now. And we'll see what kind of double checking clearances uh, leaning a little bit more and uh, one important difference between the Thompson and uh, the rifle that Eli has uh, you notice that his has a safety uh, this one that does not it is the hammer so that Maybe something that you like or don't like. Ah, oh, the second shot was much better. Much more enjoyable than the first <laughs> shot. Where'd I hit on that one? So you're three inches high, one, in, one and a half inches left. Okay. All right. Well, that's probably as good as these old eyes are going to do. I'm not going to adjust my sights. We're going to, uh, I think that's good enough for us to move to 100. For mine so go ahead and shoot yours so because of the giant bore in these uh, muzzle loaders and the small bo uh, small barrel diameter they're actually very light they're lighter than my hunting rifles but we're also shooting a very heavy bullets uh, this combination means that these recoil uh, worse than my magnum hunting rifles there's a lot of recoil uh, in a muzzle loader Carry on, Eli. Okay, going hot.
So that one was about uh, an inch high and an inch right. And so one thing that I definitely noticed this time is that there's a lot in my sights. There's a lot of room for interpretation. So I can shift the rifle a degree, about a degree in, okay, well, not a degree, a, a fraction uh, in either direction and my front sight can still be within my rear sight posts. For giggles, uh, I'm going to shoot the gong just so we have a, get an impression of how big of a ring it makes. Fire in a hole. <laughs> well, it made a ring. Uh, I couldn't see the reaction because of the smoke. <laughs> but, Wasn't uh, much of a reaction. Yeah. Hmm. Somewhat anticlimactic. Right. That would have taken a critter down. Yeah? Yeah. Elevation's dead on two inches to the left. Nice. Na 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 Eli, do you even know what I'm doing? I haven't the foggiest <laughs> idea. You just dated yourself. No, you just dated yourself. <laughs> Find them. Bob, what was I doing? Suicide is Painless. And, the which theme is a theme song. song for? MASH. That's right. Whenever I hear big heavy helicopters, it runs through my mind. I can't help it. Well, we fouled up pretty quickly here. Um, I was starting to half, I wasn't able to seat the bullet fully on the last round. And so we decided to take them apart. That's the beauty of these inlines versus the old style. Uh, we were right out here in the field, we could take the breech plugs out. And, uh, and we did. And that brings up two very interesting points. Uh, Eli's and mine, Eli's is a tradition and this is uh, the Thompson Center. I just want to show you the the differences here in the breech plugs. We explored the fact that I like the t uh, the uh, traditions better because you didn't I didn't need a tool to remove it, and it has an O-ring seal. The Thompson Center does not. You can see I'm starting to build carbon up around in here, and if, if that carbon uh, got built up uh, a lot, then it could actually bridge the gap and form a bond and seal this really tight. So. Uh, the traditions is definitely better. Here's the other thing. Uh, check out that big, check out that big cavity there. I don't know if that cavity is a requirement for the 209 primer, but this is going to be a hell of a, a lot harder to clean this cavity than this just this flat surface here. So in order to get this clean at the end of the day or at the end of the hunt, then you're going to have to have a tool and a scraper and and a bunch of stuff where you could just. Uh, scrape that off with your pocket knife and be done so between the two the tc and and the traditions i definitely give props to the traditions for a better breech plug design have the two flying muzzle loaders here and we had a great afternoon shooting them. Uh, let's take a look at the targets. This was uh, my 50 yard target. 
it was about four inches high and then we moved out to a hundred yards and I had a, a nice little grouping here about two inch grouping here and a, a flyer I don't know what it was up with that so um, I'm, I'm happy with the accuracy coming out of the TC Eli talked about your targets what do we got there so if we go and we look at mine so I started off uh, high and right so I had fired twice had a fairly large spread uh, moved over to the 100 yard target uh, my first shot was actually off the paper off to the right then we had to adjust the sights some there's no definitive markings on what it would be you adjusted it some and then that was my second shot and we adjusted it some more and ended up over here and there's a four shot group right in there uh, one of the shots uh, oh, couldn't see so it went through the same hole I don't think it went off the off the paper so uh, the 50 makes big holes a little, Very. A little compare and contrast on these um, they're different in the finish this one is not a uh, uh, electroless nickel or electro plate this is actually a Cerakote finish and we did notice that the Cerakoting is starting to come off of the muzzle uh, now, the, I did buy that from the Bargain Cave. Uh, it was listed as the ramrod was being scratched, but I didn't inspect the end of the muzzle. So that may or may not have happened before today, but regardless, it's happening. Um, the TC has a black, like a nitride coating or something. Uh, I think it's kind of a wash, but I think that this is a better finish. Uh, sights, both are fiber optic. But the uh, TC has a better sight picture because the traditions, the rear sight actually loops around right in the, right in the nook where you're supposed to put the front sight. Um, the action. I think it's a matter of preference, but I, I think that this action is easier to operate. Um, I'm not a fan of the fact that you have to mimic a, a pulling the trigger motion really close to the trigger but uh, besides that it it works this one's a little bit bulky and, and rounded and organic and we're gonna be hunting in the rain and stuff and you might have gloves and this one's a little bit harder to engage uh, they both had really good triggers uh, the stocks are comparable they both have swivels the stock on the TC is adjustable for length of pull and it has a really nice thick cushy recoil pad uh, not adjustable length of pull on the traditions and it has a hard uh, a harder rubber pad so uh, the stock wind goes to the TC and I think that that's I think we covered it uh, accuracy was just fine out of all of them and I think that they're I think that they're both a great choice I'm glad I made my choice are you glad that you made your choice oh yeah all right well, we had a lot of fun. Thanks for coming with us on this afternoon, uh, sighting in our muzzle loaders and getting ready to maybe harvest the big wapiti in September. If you have any uh, insight or thoughts, go ahead and comment below. We want to hear, especially the products you're using to reduce fouling. Uh, I guess I'll talk about that a little bit. Eli's, for some reason, didn't foul as much as mine did. Mine fouled enough that it was very, very hard after three shots to uh, get the Sabbath to steep fully and I don't know if it's because he was using uh, powder and I was using pellets but they were both 777 so I'm not sure about that so share your experiences you can't take back a bullet and you never ever want to wish that you could so always follow the four basic safety rules whenever handling firearms shoot safe shoot straight we'll catch you on the firing line thanks for watching like and subscribe We're about ready to put your plugs in and shoot. Who's gonna shoot first? You are. Okay. Yeah, let me find my earplug. I don't know where I put them. Just makes great video. Me looking for my earplugs. Got nuts and bolts in my washer pocket. My hose clamps. There's SD cards. Got a flashlight. Keys. Got a 38.
Bear weight. It's got a four inch crescent wrench. <gasps> got one ear There's plug. One. It's under the 38 and under the crescent wrench. Oh, there the earplug was wedged in the 38. <laughs> Got a revolver guy he says the guy's got a revolver in his pocket. I don't know why I have a revolver in my pocket. Oops, why not? I was headed out. Okay. I'm almost ready to shoot. I'm getting there. 